In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 restaurants in New York City. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Number 10. Birialandia. Over the past few years, dark, rich and aromatic Tijuana-style beef birria has been the chief obsession of Los Angeles taco trackers, driving Teddy's Red Tacos and other purveyors into Instagram stardom. This year, birria fever rode on a white truck called Birialandia to Queens. Rich in its blend of meat cuts, aromatic from cinnamon and other spices, tart from vinegar and deeply warming from dried toasted chilies, the truck's birria is served alone as a consomme, as a topping for a tostada, and as a melita filling. But for most people milling around Jackson Heights' chosen corner of the truck, birria means tacos built on two consomme dipped tortillas and a red blotch of fresh tomato tomatillo salsa. Number 9. Hanio. Jenny Kwok began showing New Yorkers Korean cuisine pleasures before David Chang was old enough to drive. Explaining and adapting the cuisine she grew up with and cooking at her mother's side in her first restaurant, Doc Suni, is still her superpower. She leads her customers deeper into Korean seafood cooking with Hanio on a fine corner site in Park Slope, Brooklyn. She wants to churn spicy cod roe and sea urchin into the warm rice and tuna of Hanyo's HWE Dup Bap, then grilled oysters in melted butter. Still, some of the best moments happen when the restaurant leaves the script to cook an inspired Tex-Mex-ish queso fundido or a plate of beignets just outside the French Quarter. Number 8. Benno. Jonathan Benno's curse is known as a chef, moderately recognized by the general public but highly respected by his peers for his range and technique. The reasons for this flickered in and out of sight when cooking at Lincoln Ristoranti, but at Benno there on full display. Just when you decided you never tasted a more beautifully seared duck breast, you notice it was served beside a shatteringly thin envelope of savory pie, inspired North African, wonderful to eat and tricky to make. Sow cows, lutzes and triple axles are matched by a classic sense of what tastes good with what. Inside this windowless hotel dining room there are few revelations, but there are plenty of reminders of how many deep pleasures can be gained from complicated, precise cooking. Number 7. CKA Ka Kuelu. When all your regular haunts start looking the same, CKA Ka Kuelu's a night in order. It's a few steps from Roberto's and a half dozen other Ville Parm palaces in the Bronx lining Arthur Avenue, but step in and you're in an old village tavern somewhere in Albania or Kosovo. The owner and his chef have both border connections. Heads may turn when you enter, and you'll smile. Collect musical instruments, farm tools, coffee mills and antique wall clothes. Smell the front door breads in the oven. Ask for some, accompanied by pickled peppers and two or three creamy dips, after which you might want some veal stew or yogurt soaked dumplings in a clay dish. Sausages will, of course. Desserts are also baked on site, like Shekapair's nut-topped cookies. Coffee from long-handled copper pots. You might know this as Turkish coffee, but you'll call it Albanian as long as you stay at CKA Ka Kuelu. Number 6. Kawi. People hoped David Chang would open a straight-up Korean restaurant in New York for the better part of two decades, and now that it's finally done, none of them want to go. It's worth though. Getting to Hudson Yards isn't such an ordeal, and Unjo Park's menu fights the big box torpor of the mall every step of the way. Kimbap alone is more rewarding than most restaurants' entire menu. And yes, H&M is downstairs, but here are some soy marinated raw crab legs that make a huge impression even before you notice a bonus, the crab's body is stuffed with creamy crab roe rice. You also get a deep and idiosyncratic list of drinks, state-of-the-art hospitality and shameless I love the 80s playlists, if she hung out at Kawi, Billie Eilish would know about Van Halen. Number 5. Hutong. For years, the beleaguered pack of Chinese food fanatics in New York has lamented the shortage of the kind of skillfully crafted, artfully presented cooking that you can't get unless you're willing to pay. Some high-end misfires raised our hopes to knock them down. But Hutong shows what a serious Chinese kitchen, this one is led by Fei Wang, can do when great ingredients become loose. An offshoot of a restaurant in Hong Kong, it claims to specialize in northern Chinese cuisine, and while there are some examples here, and there, the chef is from Chengdu, and his Sichuan dishes are some of the most compelling things on the menu. Another strong suit is dim sum, made to order and always available, although the lunch bench is deeper. Number 4. Lama San. 
Nikkei cuisine should be the idea at Lama San, but if you expect to eat the traditional Japanese community food in Peru, you'll be confused. Impressed, probably happy, but confused. Chef Eric Ramirez takes ideas from Japan and Peru and mad libs into his own modern dishes. The flavors come from all directions. You're expecting citrus and chilies in hamachi tiradito, but probably not lemongrass, coconut and green tea, and while scallop ceviche isn't exactly terra incognita, when did you see one in cherimoya juice? Or nigiri served with duck breast slices seasoned with cilantro and warm banana? Cocktails are even more esoteric, and the wine list zooms out of South America for a tour of great wine-making coastal regions from Chile to New Zealand. Number 3. Resdora. For Massimo Bottura, Osteria Francescana's cerebral experimental chef in Modena, Italy, most of the press that Stefano Secchi, the chef, got when he opened this modest-looking trittoria. But what makes Resdora such a breath of fresh air, oddly enough, is the pasta art schooling Mr. Secchi received at a much older Modenese restaurant, Hosteria Giusti. He makes his pasta disciplined and serves it with obvious confidence that fresh dough, conscientiously rolled and shaped, need not sparkle bling. Annalini's flying saucers, Tortellini's dime-size hoops, the uovo raviolo that bleeds egg yolk when you cut into it, the handmade macaroni al pettini raked with a comb to etch sauce hugging grooves and ridges, whether you've seen them before or not, each has fresh impressive power. In Emilian tradition, antipasti revolves around cheese and cured pork, and the secondi is rich but not overly elaborate, a butter-based sirloin, for example, with a sweet red pepper sauce. New York's love of Italian food is eternal, but it needs to be revived with a jolt fresh from the source, and that's what Resdora is. Number 2. Odo. Odo isn't another of those cloistered sushi counters, although at some point you eat a few pieces of sushi in one of its $200 tasting menus, and they're exceptional. Hiroki Odo, one of the most skilled Japanese chefs in the city, gives a modern slant to the ancient keizeki tradition. He pries open the time-honored progression of courses to make room for inventions like a pre-dessert cocktail shaken before you by the sommelier, Frank Cisneros, who picked up some of the Japanese cocktail bar's more recondite skills when he worked in Tokyo. The drink he pours will probably be built around some fruit currently in season, and at the end of the month something new will succeed, like the rest of the menu. Keizeki in the US has often come with a fetish for imported ingredients, but Mr. Odo works with local stuff just as a Keizeki chef would. Most seafood is caught off the East Coast, ice cream is made from sake brewed lees in Brooklyn's converted industry city warehouse. When it's time to leap down a narrow hall and through a door leading into an intimate, wood-clad bar, you'll think you've seen the future of New York's Japanese cooking. Number 1. Mercado Little Spain. I couldn't figure out how to allocate stars to the labyrinth of Spanish restaurants, bars, cafes, kiosks and shops presided over by Chef Jose Andres in the Hudson Yards complex. But putting it in the years no. One slot isn't close. Not that Mercado Little Spain's flawless. It has its share, starting with a name too long. But it's made the Spanish food scene, what five times better? Ten times that? Mercado Little Spain gives us ingredients we've never tasted before in New York, like weeks old Iberico pigs slowly melted over fire, or imported rabbit, so flavorful that no one will say it tastes like chicken, cooked over burning logs in Valencian paella. It also sells high-fidelity transcriptions of dishes from chefs Ferran Adria, whose liquid olives are still blowing minds, and his brother, Albert, who fed the excellent pastry department recipes. However, somehow the most impressive foods are the most elementary, gazpacho that shimmer with olive oil and sherry vinegar, thick dark hot chocolate that comes with churros just out of the fryer, gin and tonic goblets. These and other dishes are so much better than we're used to, that Mercado Little Spain could be New York's only Spanish restaurant. Which of the above you have visited? Which one you think is the best one? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications before you go. Thanks for watching.